I'm actually getting quite emotional here listening to this. And somebody on Facebook, Alfredo, he's just sent to me, she's saying, I can see pictures of family and friends long gone flashing in my mind, happy memories. That is beautiful. Thank you, Alfredo. Or Sophie in Norway. Lovely to have your company. Michelle Sellers, you're loving that one too. And Kim Alexander, you love that one. Everybody's loving it. Lots of beautiful, beautiful Jean. Love that one too. I think you got a number one hit right here with this one, Judah. <laughs> Definitely one to be re-released again. What album was that one off? <laughs> that was on my 2018 album, Welcome Home. Welcome right. And your album was called Welcome Home because? Mm. Uh, well, it has a few meanings. Um, Welcome Home signified the... Um, the content level that I felt as an artist and producer and songwriter um, because my first CD was called um, each of my CDs are kind of like state stages where I'm at in my life and my first CD was called The Arrival that came out in uh, 2015 my second CD The Arrival uh, on the uh, Welcome Home talked about me being comfort uh, comfortable with myself as an artist and a producer oh. and uh, it was me like inviting listeners to into my home my music was like my home so come in First song is called Stay a While, you know, enjoy yourself, make yourself comfortable. And the next song is called Welcome Home. This is my home. So it was more, it was like a metaphor for um, a comfort level of inviting people to listen to what I've been doing and who I am as an artist. And also uh, it was around the time that I bought my, purchased my first home. So oh. it had a <laughs> double meaning. So Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So shall we have a song? Yes. Uh, yeah. Speaking of Welcome Home. Uh, I'm going to do the title track from that CD and it's called, I'm not sure if I sent you this in advance. I don't remember what the songs that I sent you, but, um, <laughs> I hope this is okay. Um, this song is called, uh, welcome home and it is, uh, the title track from my CD. So Wonderful. Hopefully you guys like it. We will. <laughs>
<laughs> I got a clap for everybody. <laughs> that was sensational. And I must say, the sound quality is amazing. Good, good. good. Yeah. Anything need to be adjusted or anything? Or? Nothing at all. I'm okay. very, very happy with the sound. And like I say, we've got so many people on social media. So on Facebook Live, mm. Perdis Wilson, loving it. And oh, I saw somebody else's name, but it's gone now. Somebody Wills, I'm sorry, because I can't see all the names on there. Okay. I, must, I must introduce you all to my co-host, Geneve Knowles. And Geneve is going to um, be putting everybody on mute that takes themselves off mute. And she's going to be saying a few things about herself. Do you want to come and say that right now, Geneve? Just take yourself off mute. Yeah, you now can. I'll meet myself. Yes. <laughs> no, I'd just like to say hi to everyone. Um, I'm Mel's cousin, Geneve Knowles. Um, a little bit about me. Um, I'm an educator, um, sort of from my profession. Um, I'm an international trainer, um, business coach, mentor. Um, I've been mentoring my cousin Mel because I think she's fabulous. So <laughs> thanks. You know, I'm always always happy to support her. So. You know, hence me being here tonight. I think it was a, it was just an opportunity that I thought would be great for her to do something like this on an online platform. So I've been doing a lot of online training myself, and I think you know, in especially in these times, it's definitely worth it. It's a great way to bring people together as well from around the world. So it's really good to meet you, and I'm sure that I'll meet you again at some point on one of these events. Or live, when she goes live in a venue. That yes. is the plan. That's that the plan. is the plan. Thank you, sweetie. And so Judah, the other person yes. that's giving you some thumbs up right now is Deepak Thetu. <laughs> I'm laughing because Deepak is uh, my bandmate and my friend and brother. And uh, all the guitar that you hear on every song that you've heard of mine, he did. Yep. So. I see his name all the time, so I'm really blessed that he's right here this evening, sharing this moment with you. Yeah, Aww. yeah, he's he's a great guy. Yeah. <laughs> and his wife One. just celebrated a birthday yesterday, so happy birthday, Jen! Happy belated birthday. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> so, um, and and the question I have for you is: If yes. you wasn't a musician, what would you have been? Ooh, um, wow! I don't know. Um, you always wanted to be a musician. I did, yeah. I um, music has been a part of my life since I was very young. Um, my uncle, um, neither of my parents are musical at all, which is so weird. <laughs> um, but my uncle, his name is Ellis Clanton. He uh, got me started on saxophone. He taught me my first song, which was Amazing Grace, uh -huh. and uh, he got me started on saxophone. And uh, it was always, I don't know, when I was little, I didn't want to take it as far as I've taken it. I didn't know that I wanted to do that. I just knew that I liked doing music. Yeah. But I was um, overwhelmed by the expectation. Like if you play saxophone, then you have to be as good as Kenny G or whatever. <laughs> so <laughs> when I was, when I was, which I love Kenny G. And uh, that yeah. was my first experience playing saxophone or hearing saxophone was Kenny G. Right. And um, so I was like, I will never be that good. So why even bother? Um, and then I decided that, but then after I graduated high school and went into college, I, uh -huh. um, it was something that I was like, you know, this, maybe there's something here. I, I really love doing it. People make a living doing it. I didn't know what I was going to do. I just knew that I wanted to do music. Yeah. And, um, when I was in, uh, college, halfway through college, I decided, you know, when my, my, um, my professor, my band professor, he said that you should look into teaching. And I, at the time, I said, I don't want to teach. I don't want to teach nobody. <laughs> but uh, he said that, um, th I think, he said that there are, there's a shortage of people that look like you in education, you know, okay. and, um, and that you would be, you could potentially be a great role model to people like yourself. And um, so those words st stayed with me. Yeah. And um, so now I'm a teacher. Now I'm an I'm a educator, just just like uh, your your cousin. Uh, so she said, I'm an educator. Yeah. I'm like, woo. So <laughs> I, I, I'm, a, I'm a music teacher. And um, so I, I, I honestly don't know what I would be doing if I wasn't doing music because everything in my life is centered around music. So I don't, yeah. I honestly don't know. Yeah. Oh, mm. good for you. And so <laughs> do you want to play us another song? 
Yes. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm going to slow things down just a little bit. Well, can bit. I just say a quick hi to my Auntie Joan in Bermuda? Absolutely. Absolutely. Who's here on the Zoom call, which is nice. And Floyd Paris, how you doing? <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> All right. So okay. that first that first song that I did was was an original. Like I said, it was uh, the title track for my Welcome Home CD. Uh -huh. This song, I um, because I'm I'm as much of a fan of music as I am, you know, an artist. You know, I, there's a lot of songs that I just love, and uh, when I love a song really like as much as I do, I I just have to record it. Like I just have to, <laughs> I have to make my mark on it somehow. Yeah. Even if no one ever hears it, it's really I've, I have so many songs that I've recorded that no one will ever hear. <laughs> but um, but I've never released this one. And this was a, a song, a popular song. It's called "You Are So Beautiful." Whoops. Mm -hmm. It's called "You Are So Beautiful," and it's a you know you hear it at um, you know weddings. I played it at like a dozen weddings, uh, but I never did my I recorded my own rendition of it, and it's on YouTube now. If you just look up. You know, Judas Sealy, you, you are so beautiful. If you just type that anywhere, it'll just pop up. Yeah. But um, it's not available for sale because I never re released it officially. But might you release this. it one day? I, I might. We'll, we'll tell you after we've heard it. We'll tell you whether or not you should release it. <laughs> oh, no pressure. <laughs> like, you might, don't put that one out. <laughs> don't release that one after you hear it. <laughs> All right. Well, hopefully, hopefully you guys enjoy it. Um, and it's uh, it's called "You Are So Beautiful," originally by uh, Joe Cocker, I believe his name is. Okay. Let me test this horn out a little bit. <laughs>
Yes. It's got to be released. <laughs> Your listeners have spoken. We have oh. MSC World says, please, by all means, release this track. <laughs> Alfredo Sosa says, that's a wedding couple's first dance song. Oh. Or Sophie in Norway, she has got goosebumps. Goosebumps. <laughs> and, oh, the, the, messages, the messages keep going and I can't read them quickly <laughs> now. There's so many messages. Yeah. Oh. And Empress Lee, bless her, said it reminds her of her mum. Her mum recently passed away. Aww. So that was just truly beautiful. Floyd Paris, yes, this is a beautiful song. Oh, everybody, yeah. We have spoken. Laverne says this has to be released. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will soon. I, I will yeah. Soon. <laughs> so what inspired you to, to choose that track? Um, that track, I don't know. I, uh, well, one, my, my wife, um, she loves that song, and uh, I just there are some songs. Well, I love that song too. And when I when I heard it, I thought I could rearrange it in a way that um, that grooves a little bit because the original song doesn't really have a kind of groove. You know, it just it's just piano. And Who voice, sang the original? Is, it's a man um, named Joe Cocker. Okay. Um, Joe Cocker. He has this kind of gravelly soul voice, uh -huh. and, um, and and it's and it's beautiful the way that it is. Um, but I, I kind of reimagine, I, I like to kind of give songs this kind of slinky, kind of neo-soul kind of groove, if it's uh, ripe for that treatment. Because uh -huh. I, I love neo-soul music. Neo-soul is music like D'Angelo, yeah. Maxwell, um, you know, Erica Badu, you know, yeah. a lot of those artists. I love that type of music. And mm -hmm. a lot of the music that I, um, that I create, I approach with that mindset. Mm -hmm. um, so that song, I thought it would be cool if I gave it the neo soul treatment. Yeah. And, um, and when I was creating it, I w it just started as an idea because I knew how to play the song, but I didn't know how it would sound with that kind of groove. But then it kind of, you know, just kind of grew and evolved, and then, and then it became that. So that's how it came about. Nice. So Floyd Paris has just told me in the chat box that Joe mm -hmm. Cocker was from Sheffield, oh. and Sheffield is in the UK. And oh. Sheffield's not too far from where I'm from. <laughs> wow. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Floyd, for that. But your, your wife also sings, doesn't she? she well, she's, uh, she's a musician. Um, uh -huh. she, um, she plays bass, bass guitar. Oh, does and, she? Uh, yeah, yeah. But she, she sings as well? Not, not really. <laughs> she, okay. has sung on, she has sung on some of my songs. Well, she sung on one of my songs, but... She's written songs as well, and she, but she mainly is a musician. Right. Um, but, uh, don't Does let she her play hear. in your band then? Yeah, she did for a while until our daughter was born. Um, uh -huh. She played in, in my band for, um, so I, I started my own band around 2010, and she played up until 2019. Um, Aww. Yeah, she was the only bass player I've ever used. Uh -huh. And then once our daughter was born, um, she took some time off and, you know, so she now she brings the daughter to the shows and stuff. And, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so, man. We still play together. We, you know, we play together in church and stuff like that. But she's not yeah. the best player in my band. Um, yeah. Oh, and Susie Oliver in New York. She loved the tune, too. Oh, Your hometown. That's where you are right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Just in New York. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I got another question for you. Mm hmm. What is the best gig that you've performed at? Ooh. Uh, is that a tough one? It, it is, because <laughs> um, I don't want to sound partial. Like, all my gigs are the best. No, <laughs> uh, no um, the best gig um, that that's, I don't want to, I won't list my own shows that I've done. Um, well, I'll list my own, and then I'll list one that, that wasn't my own. My favorite um, show, I've done a lot of shows, and they're all great. Um, uh -huh. Probably my CD release concert two years ago um mm -hmm. welcome my welcome home cd release concert was probably one of the best shows that we've ever done because we we had a really nice venue um, we sold a lot of tickets people really enjoyed it it was great food great fun uh -huh. great atmosphere and um it was it was the, it was received so well not because we were just having a good time because we were we always have a good time yeah but all the pieces came together like it was great sound great environment and everybody just had a great time. Like, mm -hmm. And so, and that's how I gauge whether the show was good or not. Because yeah. if we're up there jamming and nobody had a good time, then, <laughs> then what's the point, you know? <laughs> yeah, but, exactly. Uh, I, 
but I, I knew that everyone had a good time because of the feedback and the pictures and people still talk about it to this day. So that was probably yeah, my favorite good. one. Yeah, that was and that was two years ago. Two years around this time. It was literally like two years ago around this time. Um, and my favorite one that I that I did was um, a long time ago. Not that long ago. It was like maybe 10 years ago. It was around the time that uh, Whitney Houston passed. Uh -huh. um, and uh, Whitney Houston, I mean, you know, she was, I mean, she was the greatest. And uh, yeah. so our, we, the musicians in, in Rochester got together and did a, um, a Whitney Houston tribute concert to her, uh, for her. And um, one of the highlighting moments was they did I Will Always Love You, you know. Yeah. And I got to play that saxophone solo on that did song. You, didn't Kirk Whalen yeah. do that? Yes, yes, he did. Yeah. Yes, he did. <laughs> so I, for that one moment, I felt like I was Kirk Whalen. <laughs> <laughs> For that 15 seconds, however long that saxophone solo is, so I would love was, to hear you play yeah, that though. I, I, I mean, I can't play it the way he plays it. But <laughs> that was my favorite. I felt like a, a star <laughs> just Aww, because I played I that. I, because I was because I practiced that for years. You know, every saxophone player knows and loves that solo. It's so iconic. So the the opportunity to get to play it, and you know, and as soon as I went in and started playing and you know everybody put their lighters up and their Aww. hands in the air and <laughs> even though it was a small venue i just felt so cool yeah. <laughs> it, it made me feel so cool so that was one of my favorite um, and that was like that was like 10 years ago <laughs> Geneva, Geneva wants you to play it <sighs> i can't play it. it won't sound right without the music i can't oh uh, I'll, I'll just um play what i know of it uh, Ooh. <laughs> It won't sound like Kirk. <laughs> it won't sound like Kirk. Um, how does it go? I would offer to sing it, but I better not. I want people to stay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it sounds better than me singing it. Ooh, yeah, I don't want that. All right, so it sound like this. <laughs> That it was something like that. That so, was just as good as Kirk no, Whalem. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, yes, it was. <laughs> Michelle Sellers said yes. <laughs> well, that, well, that's why I love that, because I got to play what he played. So. Yeah. <laughs> no, that was beautiful. Y'all can, can tell I'm a fan of Kirk Whalem, clearly. Yeah. <laughs> and do you, want, do you want to tell us a little about your, your uh, musical crush on Kirk Whalem? <laughs> <laughs> My musical crush. Uh, yeah. Um, so <laughs> he's not listening. Clearly, he's not going to hear this. So, I can say no. but um, it's funny. I, I've uh, I credit for those of you who know Kirk Whalem is he's the the one of the most legendary saxophonists that ever lived. And, well, he's still living, but he um, he's uh, Grammy won Grammys, been nominated like twelve times. He's um, he that solo on that Whitney Houston uh, record is is iconic. And all sax players everywhere have, everyone's heard it. It's the most heard saxophone solo ever. And um, even though he's done stuff before that and even after, um, but his influence on saxophone players is, um, is unparalleled. So, um, and, I, and I met him at, the CD, at that, uh, that concert that he did a couple of years ago. Um, but uh, fun, uh, interestingly enough, I was talking to one of my um, friends, uh, another smooth jazz guy, his name is Greg Manning. Uh, he's a he's an amazing producer, amazing pianist, and um, we were talking. We were doing something because we're working on something. And he, and what did he say? He said, um, so he asked me the same question. He said, so who's your main influence? And he said, who's your favorite saxophone player? And I have a ton. Of, I, I love Kirk. I love Gerald Albright. I love Boney James, uh, Huge Groove. All those guys that we know and love. I love all those guys too. Marcus Anderson. <laughs> um, so he said, uh, what did he say? He said, who's your favorite guy? I said, Kirk Whalem, hands down. He's my favorite. He credited. He's credited with uh, me picking up the tenor. I love the tenor because of him. He's like, oh, okay, cool. And he never mentioned it again. So later that night, uh, me and my wife were watching a movie. We we're just chilling, and then uh, I get a phone call, 
from a Memphis number. Now, I don't know anyone in Memphis, so I thought it was like a bill collector or something. So, um, so I didn't answer. And so I'm like, so I showed it to my wife. I'm like, this is a Memphis number. And she was like, who do you know in Memphis? I'm like, nobody. And then I said, you know what? It's probably Kirk Whalem. I was clearly joking, right? So, because uh, I don't have his number, he doesn't have mine. So like, I joked with her, it's probably Kirk Whalem. So I didn't answer. So 13 minutes later, I remember 13 minutes later, I picked up my voicemail and I'm like, let me see who this is. And then I listened to it. It's like, hi, Judah, this is Kirk Whalem. I'm like, what? <laughs> and me and my wife started screaming, right? We, we just lost it. He's like, why is he calling me? How does he have my number? Like we literally, like Kirk Whalem is like my Michael Jackson to me. <laughs> you know, like he's like my prince, you know, he's like, you know, so he, uh, so he called me, I guess Greg Manning, the guy that I was talking to earlier, gave him my number and he called me and I didn't know that he was gonna do that. So I, from now on, I will never let a number go straight to voicemail. <laughs> I will always answer it. Because it might be Kirk Whalem, you never know. It might be somebody important, you know. So, um, so long story short, that 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 was um, <laughs> that was an eventful <laughs> night. So we ended up, you know, exchanging and, and you know, texting and stuff. And then um, one day we're gonna, you know, really like connect. But uh, that was that was really. Do strange. a song with him. Got to collab with him. After this, would, after this, uh, when he sees this, <laughs> he's gonna like, yeah, I want to work with you, the Sealy. I don't. <laughs> I, I I don't I don't even know what I would do. Like I don't I don't I, I don't know I don't I don't I don't know. Like I, I mean I love these guys so much. They even though like my music is being played alongside their music on different stations, it yeah. still doesn't register. It's still like I'm just a fan of these guys. I'm a fan of all of them. So just the concept of working with them still hasn't hit me until it won't hit me until I'm actually doing it. So I don't. I don't want to say, oh, when I see him, I'm going to do this. When we work together, it's like, it won't be real to me until we're actually doing yeah. it. So I don't, I don't even know. You are so it. humble. Oh. You really are. Oh, thank you. Thank and you. And I, I do believe it will happen. <laughs> I definitely do. Hopefully. You said that Lorna Valchin, she said, you manifested the call. I'm sure you can manifest playing together. Have faith. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Tell him Lorna. Amen. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I received that. Amen. Yeah. Wonderful. So let's have another song. All right. Uh, so let me see. Let me see what I have here. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at the ones that I sent you. So make sure I'm on. Okay. I'm gonna do. Um, so last year, again, this song from my last CD, Welcome Home. There's a song called Turn It Up, and Turn It Up was my first song to ever get played on uh, Sirius XM Watercolors, which is um you know, satellite radio. Uh -huh. Sorry. Um, so I, I had not, I knew nothing about, I didn't even know that was a possibility. Um, one of my good friends, his name was Jermaine Mundane. He's a saxophone player too. And when I released Welcome Home, I just, you know, released it on social media. I released it on, you know, all the social media platforms and, and, and digital stores. But it didn't occur to me about, no, I knew nothing about radio play. Like, I don't know how to get your stuff played. So eventually, um, Jermaine Mundane, he hits me up and he's like, you, your music is too good to not be heard. So yeah. he put me um, in contact with this guy named um, uh, Dave Kuhnert, who was my current radio promoter. And, um, you know, and then we started working together and through his work, he chose one of the songs from my CD to go um, to possibly get a national play uh -huh. or international play, clearly. Yes. <laughs> and, <laughs> And um, so, um, and that and that song was turned it up. So, um, so that I'm gonna play that song now. This is Fabulous. the song that really opened a lot of doors for yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I'm gonna play that song. Thank you. Oh, turn it up. <laughs>
fabulous. A lot of people loving that one. James Johnson on Facebook Live. He said, my goodness, that sound. <laughs> oh, that and Alfredo. I think he's got a new fan with Alfredo. Oh, awesome. He's loving that one. Oh. Yeah. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you all. Thank you. Yeah, it's brilliant. And we have a question. Yes. From a friend of mine, Neo mm -hmm. Strats. Hey, Neo mm -hmm. Strats, how you doing? Hey, hey, DJ Safa, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Hello. Good to have yeah. you with us this evening. Yes, yes, yes. So I'm, going to to, I'm going to read out your message for Judah, okay? Yeah, sure. Okay. So, Neostrat says, I have a question. Yeah. I love the way, the way he says this. It can wait after the next dope joint you play. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I'm a fellow saxophonist, oh, and cool. I want to ask you, how do you repeat a note so smoothly, and what technique tips would you give in general? Uh, uh, well, well, first of all, thank you, and shout out to all the saxophonists out there. Uh, I, uh, my advice is lis it's, lis it's a lot of listening, listening and imitating. Like I said, I'm a big fan of Kirk Whale. I mean, he's a huge influence on my playing so when you develop your ear and you hear something like when you when you hear when you hear something and you can it's even if we and, and i don't know a lot of people are like well you're copying it's not really copying because there's only first of all there's only 12 notes in the musical scale so everybody's going to do something that sounds like someone else at some point mm -hmm. but um we learn from the greats we learn from those that inspire us we listen to them we imitate them and then we make it our own, you know, because even if I played exactly the same notes that Kirk Whalen plays or same notes that Boney James plays or the same notes that Cannonball Adderley plays, they're still going to sound like them. I'm still going to sound like me. So it's it's really about, you know, like I said, listening and imitating. Like if I hear like wh wh whatever your the types of music that you like to listen to, I like to listen to, you know, neo soul, I like to listen to gospel, I like to listen to R&B. And then when I hear certain uh, horn players, playing over the type of music that I want to make that makes me gravitate towards them more so like when I hear someone like like Marcus Anderson who's a phenomenal alto I mean just a phenomenal musician period but I love the way he approaches songs when he plays alto and so I listen to what he's doing he's like because I can imagine myself playing over that type of music so I listen to what he does or I listen to anyone else that plays over the type of music so it's, it's, it's not just the saxophone but it's also how they approach the music that they're playing over because there's a, there's a lot of really, really dope cats that can play, but if you put them playing over like, you know, like a Neo Soul record or D'Angelo or something like that, it, the styles won't mesh, you know what I mean? It'll be like some really fancy lines, but it'll be like, but then you get somebody else that knows how to play over that type of music. So it's, 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 so it's, it's, it's really big picture thinking, like who do I like to listen to? What type of music do I like to listen to? Okay, who's playing over that type of music? A lot of guys are, you know, your bone. If you're talking about smooth jazz, we're not even talking about like real jazz. But if you're talking about like smooth jazz, you got your bonies who play, you know, Boney James plays over that real smooth R&B. You know, Kirk Whalen plays over a lot of that gospel. You know, um, Marcus Anderson does too. Gerald Albright plays over that. He's real funky. You know, he's, his altissimo is just out of this world. You know, and, and, and it, so it's, you study all those guys to hear what they do. And we study the greats as well to expand our musical vo vocabulary because we don't want to ever you know, only be playing the same two lines that we stole from another guy. You know what I mean? You want to know how those lines connect and uh, study theory so that um, you can create your own lines, you know what I mean, and create your own identity. I know I said a lot. I hope, I hope that this is making sense because uh, I, 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 I can get really caught up when I start talking about, you know, saxophone and stuff. So bottom line, listen to your favorite guys. Find out who your favorite guys are. Find out who you want to be as a musician, as a saxophonist. Listen to them. Uh, transcribe some of them. My, my jazz professor was trying to get me to tr transcribe solos in college and I never wanted to do it. I hated it because it's a long process. It's long. Like writing out those notes, that's a pain. And then it wasn't until I graduated from college that I realized how valuable it was. So like if you can, take the time. Start small. Just like, you know, not, not small as that. Like it's easy. Like you listen to somebody like Maceo who's real funky but he only plays like a few notes. He's like, bada, bada, do that up, but do do. It's not a whole bunch of technical lines, but it's still really 
really uh, uh, hard to, to duplicate because it's phrasing and it's tone. So start, start with something that is, is real attainable. Like don't try and transcribe a, Joel, a John Coltrane record if you don't know how to. Start small with something that's real, real easy that you can do. Then once you learn that, then you go to something else. It's like, oh, I can probably learn to play like this. Oh, I can probably learn this solo. And then I can start. And then after a while, you have all these things that you've learned. And then they just kind of become a part of your identity as a saxophonist. Like I, you know, I've, I've learned stuff from, from Maceo, from Joshua Redman, from Kirk, obviously from, from Gerald, you know, all these different guys. And it's, it just kind of became a part of who I am as a saxophonist. And it's okay to study these guys and steal their lines. Cause that's what everybody does. Everybody steals their own lines. I'm sorry. I'm, I, does this make sense? Is this okay? No, yeah. yeah okay. Good, 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 good. I, that, yeah. Kirk Williams, your main guy, yeah? Yeah, he's my main guy. I love him. Can I yeah. spell his name in, in the chat? Kirk, and then is it W H A L A M or something? W H A L U M. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. yeah. He's 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 my main guy. Yeah. I mean, I mean, there's there's hundreds, thousands of guys. That's just the guy that spoke to me directly. And um, if you it, for for those that play saxophone, it's it's his tone and his phrasing that is is really singles him out among everybody else his tone is like it's hard to duplicate what he does and um and he does it so well so but yeah okay thank you yeah no problem no problem that was great a great explanation i think i can pick up a sax now and play the sax <laughs> after that explanation <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i, I when, when i start because i don't have a lot of people that i talk saxophone stuff with yeah you know what i mean that actually play you know, I talk to Deepak, you know, who's listening. He's, he's, we talk about jazz all the time. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we, and, but he, he plays guitar. You know, I play saxophone, even though there's a lot of common ground. Uh -huh. um, you know, and, and, and that, that information can really apply to anyone in any, in any form of, of, yeah. of whatever you're pursuing, whether it's athletics, whether it's, you know, uh, any, anything that you can learn from someone else that's yeah. doing it great, you know, learn from that person. It's okay. Uh -huh. But there, there comes a degree of self-awareness and humility that says, I don't know it all, so I need to go to someone else that knows more, mm -hmm. you know, even if it's somebody that you know, you know what I mean? Because sometimes we don't want to go to people that we know because then it'll make us seem like, you know, that we don't, that we think that they're better than us or whatever. Yeah. It just is it, in the pursuit of, you don't do that to a teacher, you know what I'm saying? When you go to a teacher, your teacher is imparting wisdom to you. And it doesn't have to be just in the classroom. It could be someone that you know that's doing something that you want to do. And you yeah. say, how do you do it? And then if they tell you, great. If they don't tell you, fine. Then you go to somewhere else and say, how do you do it? Or you learn it on your own. Yeah. But it just, <laughs> it just it takes a degree of humility and self-awareness to say, I don't know it all. And I need someone's help. And, yeah. you know, and, and that's okay. You know, but cool. yeah. Well, yeah. thank you so much for that wonderful explanation. Oh, no problem. Problem. Would you like to play us another tune? Yes, yes, I would. Um, I want to say quick hi to ha Karen Gill. How you doing, girl? Where is she? And James, thank you for joining us. And Diana, wonderful to have you here this evening. And Iona, oh, and Dolores Best. We've got some amazing people here today. <laughs> MSC Well. Hi. Hi, Diana. Hi. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm not too bad. I'm, I'm trying to work at the same time as listening to your beautiful sounds. Oh, bless you. I really missed it. Judah's, Judah's work is just perfect for when you're working. <laughs> so you're tuned in at the right time. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. I'll see you at the next okay. Smooth Jazz Lounge real soon, in person, I hope, in the next few I months. I hope so too. Yes, well, we will definitely speak again, but thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Okay, Judah, we're ready for you. All right. Um, this is a, another cover that I never released. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> Get mad. Um, I, I, um, this one, my favorite, so I, like I, I talked a lot about sax players, um, but I'm a student of all genres. Um, some of my favorite artists are uh, Donny Hathaway, Luther Vandross, um, you know, Whitney Houston, uh, Layla Hathaway. Uh, a lot of, a lot of, a, I, 
Isley Brothers, uh, Swing Out Sisters, Swing Out Sisters, um, I believe they're from, they're from um, the UK. I'm not sure. I don't know if anybody's heard of them. But um, Swing Out Sisters is like my favorite band. But anyway. Oh, yeah, I remember them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they've released a, lot, released a lot of music, you know, internationally, like especially in like Japan and stuff. Uh-huh. Um, but anyway, uh, one of my favorite singer is Maxwell. He's my favorite singer. Oh, yeah. And I, and I, and I, love, I love all his first two albums. Well, his, really his first three albums. His first album, which was Maxwell's Urban Hang Suite, where you get something, something, and uh, Ascension, shouldn't I realize, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, to me, that whole album is like the greatest album that's ever been made, to me. And, and I can make a strong case for that, but yeah. that's neither here nor there. <laughs> no, um, but the, the production, the just, it's everything that music should be. Like, you know, R&B, when you're talking about R&B and soul music, it's just... It's it's just it's just it's just everything to me. But anyway, Maxwell is my favorite singer, and he did a cover of a song that was written by a woman named Kate Bush, and it was a song called "This Woman's Work." Oh yeah. And um okay. and it was featured in the uh, a movie called "Love and Basketball." It's been you know it's just been sung and duplicated by a lot of people. But mm-hmm. I recorded my own rendition of it, and it's on um is it on YouTube? I don't know. I don't think it's on YouTube, but I'll put it on YouTube. But um. <laughs> Yeah, I, I may release this one eventually. I'm gonna do like a CD of all covers one day. But yeah, I, I think just, you need to actually. <laughs> I think I think I will. <laughs> I, I will. I've been storing them all up. <laughs> I probably have like two CDs worth of covers that I haven't released yet. But, um, but this song is called "This Woman's Work," so I hope Wonderful. you guys like it. Thank you. Thank you. 
Wow. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That I was love, I love pretty beautiful. Thank you.